Hello, uh, good afternoon and welcome to another uh, gospel broadcast uh, from the Christians that meet in the Bridge End uh, Gospel Hall there in Cowen. And thanks very much for taking uh, just a little bit of time, perhaps it's Sunday afternoon or perhaps you're watching back at another time, um, just to hear um, what uh, God has to say to us through his Bible, uh, the living word of God. I hope you'll just take uh, a few moments just to, to stop and to think uh, about what God has um, to say to us. I want to read, um, well you might say, well where do we, how do we know what God has to say to us? Well, God has a lot to say to us and he's recorded it in the Bible, uh, the Holy uh, Bible, his word. And I want to read uh, from the Bible, uh, from the book of Matthew, which is one of the stories um, that uh, recount the life of Jesus Christ, son of Na- the son of God, uh, the son uh, of, of Mary. Uh, that great miracle man from Galilee. And I want to read a story about one of the miracles and I want to think about a wee phrase that's in the middle of the story. Matthew, and it's chapter number 14. If you've got a Bible, get it down, read it uh, and read it along if you can. If not, um, read it later. Matthew chapter 14 and verse number 22. And it says there, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side of the lake. While he sent the multitudes away. And when he'd sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain by himself to pray. Jesus was a man of prayer. Now when evening was come, uh, he was alone there. He was alone in the mountain, and the boat was now in the middle of the sea. It was tossed by the waves because the wind was contrary. A great storm had arisen while Jesus' disciples were in the boat crossing the lake. Now at the fourth watch of the night, the night was broken up into sections of folks who had the job of uh, of looking out uh, and making sure the safety of, of the boat. But here, no one was asleep because they were all rowing hard for their lives. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them in the middle of the storm walking on the sea and the disciples who are working so hard literally uh, desperate to save their lives and get through this storm just keeping their head down just rowing as hard as they could he said the disciples saw him walking in the sea and they were troubled they thought it was a ghost and they cried out in fear I'm sure you would too if you saw a man walking on the sea in the middle of a storm but of course this is no ordinary man This is Jesus of Nazareth. This is the Son of God. This is God in a human body. And so the one who creates the rules of physics can exist above them. Walking in the sea is no problem for this man. Immediately, Jesus sees them in the storm and in their fear. And he says, be of good cheer. Don't be afraid. It is I. It's me. Don't be afraid. Be of good cheer. Take heart. Take courage in the midst of this storm. And Peter, the kind of bold, brash leader of the disciples, he answered them and he says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you in the water. And so he said, Jesus says to him, come. And when Peter came down from the boat, He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink down into the stormy sea, he cried out saying these three words that changed his life. Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the winds ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and they bowed down in worship before Jesus. And they said, Truly, you are the Son of God. And here in the story that we have, we've got this incident of these disciples and they're going through a storm and it's dark and it's dangerous 
uh, and it's, it's deadly, and they're all alone. Uh, and there is the possibility that, that perhaps you feel a little bit like these disciples. They've rode all night. Their energy is spent. They've tried every self-help website. They've looked up every form of religion that they can. They've explored the philosophies of the world. They've turned over new leaves. They've written to-do lists. They've done all that they can. And life feels like a storm. The storm and the struggle of life. Perhaps you're like that. Perhaps it's a storm of financial uncertainty. Perhaps it's a storm of family breakdown. Perhaps it's a storm of, of health worries. Perhaps it's a storm of bereavement and sadness. Perhaps it's the storm of physical illness. Perhaps it's the storm of, of a spiritual darkness on your life. A sense that all is not well, all is not that it could be. Anxiety, fear, depression. And into the storm as these men, as their strength was spent and their energy was drained Jesus came to them in the darkness you know that's been the experience of countless millions of people who've had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ the son of God when they were came to an end of themselves when their strength was all gone when all of their own efforts to be right with God and right with this world had been exhausted, Jesus came walking towards them. Saul of Tarsus, a religious zealot, who wrote the major or wrote a good proportion of our New Testament, he was uh, he thought that Christians were heretics. He hated them with a passion. And went to round them up to imprison them. And he'd even been involved in the execution of some. There came a day in the life of Saul of Tarsus when he had a personal encounter with Jesus. And his life was never the same again. And that's what happened to these disciples in the middle of the storm. The Lord Jesus came to them. And if you're in a storm today, then the Lord Jesus Christ is never far away. In fact, he's never more than a prayer away. And so they see the Lord Jesus coming to them. And they're not just entirely sure who he is. Peter thinks, it's, thinks he, he's sure, he's confident that it's the Lord. And he puts the Lord to the test. He says, Lord, if it's you, then say to me and I'll, I'll come and I'll, I'll walk on the water. Perhaps you dream of doing great things. Perhaps you dream of walking with God. Perhaps you dream of, uh, of, of being something and achieving something. You've maybe heard the expression, if you want to walk on water, then you'll have to get out of the boat. And that's exactly what Peter did. Peter took a step of faith in response to the invitation of Jesus. The one who says, come to me. All ye who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Lord Jesus says, come, because all things are ready. The Lord Jesus extended the hand of invitation to Peter, and Peter took that step of faith out of the boat and into the stormy seas. He took a one step and two steps, and then he began to look around him. And as he saw the winds and the waves, his faith failed. And he begins to sink. But just in the depth of despair, in the moment of danger, and death, on the very cusp, he cries out these words, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And what do you think the Lord Jesus did in response to that cry? He immediately reached out his hand, grabbed him and lifted him up and brought him safely into the boat. You know, Christians talk about a question of, are you saved? Are you saved? You know, on, just on Tuesday night past there, I was at a restaurant for my 21st wedding anniversary. And as we were there, I saw a lady and she stood up, wild-eyed, panicked, not able to, to breathe. 
and I came to the conclusion that she was choking for her life. Rather than stay in the restaurant and make a scene, she she got up and she rushed out the, the fire exit. I saw what was going on. I assumed she was choking. I went out after her. She couldn't speak. She couldn't breathe. And so I did the... I, I gave her the necessary chest thrusts, uh, abdominal thrusts, and the bolus of food was removed. Her life was saved. She was in danger of dying. We can't live without air. And by the removal of that, her life was saved. Thank goodness for that. But you know, we can't live without God. And if we do live without God and we die without God, then we'll spend eternity without God. This woman was in danger of her life, as was Peter here. But all of us, the Bible says, it's appointed unto man once to die. But after that, there's judgment. The Bible says that as by one man, Adam and Eve, as they took the forbidden fruit, sin entered in. And death by sin. So now death has passed upon all because we've all sinned and the wages of sin is death. And so just as that woman needed to someone to save her from the danger of, of choking and suffocation, the Lord Jesus Christ, he comes to save us from our sins. The Bible says the Father sent the Son to be the saviour of the world. And you may feel healthy. You're not choking for breath. But the Bible says that we are condemned already. The Bible says that we've broken God's law. We have. We've said things we shouldn't have said. We've done things we shouldn't have done. We've been angry without good excuse. We've been looked with lustful eyes upon those of the opposite sex. We've, uh, we have taken things that aren't ours. We've not been fully honest in all of our dealings. And the Bible calls those things sin. And the wages of sin is death and that eternally in a place called hell and then the lake of fire. But Jesus comes to the storm of our sin. And just as Peter was able to put his faith in the Saviour, so the Bible tells us that if thou, shalt call, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. A man asked the question um, in a Philippian jail 2,000 years ago, what must I do to be saved? You know, that woman who had inhaled her dinner, there was nothing she could do. But thankfully, someone was able to be a, a saviour. Someone was able to save her. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. He took the punishment for the sins that you and I deserve. He took the punishment for sin so that God could quite rightly and justly forgive you, the sinner, because he has been your substitute and therefore he can be your saviour. The Bible says it's by God's grace that you're saved if you will simply put your faith and trust in him. I wonder, can I ask you the question, are you saved? What must I do to be saved? Believe. In the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. I hope that's given you something uh, to think about today. I hope you uh, know that Jesus is just a prayer, just a heart cry away, able to rescue you, able to save you. If you'll say like Peter, Lord, save me. Thanks very much for your attention. If you've any questions, don't hesitate to leave some comments. Get in touch through the Facebook page or the website the Christians that meet in the local church there in uh, Bridge End Gospel Hall would be delighted um, to answer your prayer, your questions. May God bless you uh, for uh, joining us this afternoon. Thank you.